Today we're taking a look at this huge 75 inch nanocell TV from LG and that's coming up right after this. So today we're going to be taking a look at this huge 75 inch nano cell TV from LG. Now full disclosure, this video is sponsored by LG. They haven't paid me anything, but they've sent me this TV for free and they are allowing me to keep it. But this is going to be the unboxing and first impressions and then we're going to go into a lot more detail. So first of all, the unboxing, it's pretty simple, the same as any TV. You lift the box up from the top, you can then turn the TV on its side and what you then have to do is attach the feet if you're going to use them and then place it on the counter. Now this is definitely a two person job, I would not recommend doing it on your own and as you can see I've got it on the stands here, it's on top of this unit but this is just the first impressions video. I'm actually going to be wall mounting this in the front room and then we'll go into a lot more detail into the specs. But first thing you can see is it's a great looking TV. When it comes to the design, you can see we've got slim bezels all around the edge. We've got two feet either side and it's just a nice slim design. If we just check out how thick it is on the edge bezel, the edge bezel is about 19 millimeters thick and then there is just a little bit of curb at the back. And I would say that's probably going out another 40 mil. Now this is a nanocell TV and not an OLED. People do get the two confused, but with nanocell, it's a filter in front of the LCD. It filters the RGB wavelength, the red and the greens, to give you much more vibrant and much more accurate color. And as you can see here, it looks fantastic. So also with this TV here, you do get local dimming. And as you can see, it's still giving us deep blacks around the edges. So this gives us great contrast and no light bleed when it's coming through. Some TVs suffer with light bleed, and as you can see already, this one isn't, and we will go into the subtitle test on that soon. So when it comes to the actual ports on this TV, you get three HDMIs, and that's two on the side and one on the rear. You also get a 3.5 mil audio out. Then on the back, we've got the optical out, the RJ45 for ethernet, and you've got one USB port on the side, as well as one USB port on the back. So I've got something playing on the TV here. We're gonna go through the first setup and everything just to show you guys how it works. So first thing I'm gonna do is reset the TV. If we just go into settings, I'm just gonna factory reset, get it to exactly how it was when I received it. So the TV is just resetting now. You can see it comes with WebOS, it's WebOS 6. You also get the Magic Remote, which is one of my favorite remotes. You get all the useful buttons on here. We've got Netflix, Prime Audio, Disney, Rakuten, Google, as well as Alexa buttons there. And you've obviously got the usual buttons and the red, green, yellow, and blue. But I find that the Magic Remote works really well and it also works as an air mouse. So it does make it easy to press things on screen. You can also use it to press the keyboard and type quickly. And of course, we do have the voice as well, which does make things a lot easier. But you can see here, go through and we can actually control the mouse on the screen. So press the okay button on your remote if we do that. Now, when you set up the TV, you've got two choices. You can set up with your mobile device on the LG app, but of course, some people may not have a mobile even these days. So you can also do the setup on the TV. So I'm gonna do it on the TV here. We can go English, United Kingdom, go ahead and press next. We then just need to connect it to my Wi-Fi. So that is my Wi-Fi there. So once the password's in, we can go ahead and press enter and that will allow it to connect to my Wi-Fi. So you can see it's doing all that now. Terms and conditions, next. Already been through all this, so I'm gonna go ahead and agree. No pair devices, just go next. Then I'm gonna go set top box only because I haven't got a TV aerial plugged into this, but I will do on the full review, but there's plenty of content we can watch. Service area, I'm just gonna put that in. Then sound optimization, so whether it's on the wall or the stand, you just select that and it will optimize the speakers. And this one has two 10 watt speakers and they actually sound pretty good. So next one, universal control settings. Okay, I'm just gonna exit that because we don't need this. Let it load through and then we'll start installing some apps. So it's WebOS, there's loads of apps on here, whether you want YouTube, Amazon Prime, it's all there, so do, do, do. I'm gonna sign in with web browser. And this is just to link up your LG account. It's actually much easier on the mobile device, but I thought I would take you through it on the TV just in case. So all you have to do here is go to that website or scan the QR code. So we'll just go ahead and do that. I'll scan the QR code and do it that way. Takes me to the website and then we simply enter this code here. So that is 2C. 
press that in and then you just need to use sign in with LG. So you can sign in through Google, Amazon, Facebook, or if you've got an LG account and you can sign in through that. So I'm just gonna go in. Once you've done that, you can simply press done on the TV. You're signed in and you can see my email address there, but of course I've blurred that out. And then it's giving me first use completed. So what apps do I want? Realistically, I want BBC, I want Prime Video, and that'd be fine for me. So again, you need to go through and do those on the web browser, however you want to do it. And I'm just going to close, won't install them for now and press done. So now the TV's loaded up, you can see everything here. This is the usual LG stuff, lots in here. What I am going to do is I'm going to install YouTube and Netflix so we can go through this. I've also got the Xbox Series X down there so we can put on the games. So we've got Netflix installed now and we're just going to look at some picture qualities. So I was a bit worried with a 75 inch TV. I was thinking if we play 1080p content, is it going to be pixelated? Is it going to look bad? But it turns out it actually looks great on this TV. Of course, there is 4K upscaling. It's a 10 bit panel. It's not true 10 bit. It's actually 8 bit plus FRC, but that's still good. So we're just going to open up Prison Break. So this is actually 1080p. So it'd be a good one to look at. And then we'll just go through all of the different picture modes when we go onto YouTube. But, but this is just to get a look. So we'll fast forward it. This is a dark scene. But in the dark scenes, you can see lots of black there, nice deep blacks and a light bleed. So if we just play from here, we've got a bit more light. As you can see, brilliant quality there. And there's lots of different picture modes. So it normally comes in the eco mode. I tend to be turning all that off, but we can see standard here. If we go and change that, you can have vivid. You've also got film mode, sport modes. So as you can see, I've put on vivid. Please be aware, change in picture may increase energy consumption. That is fine. So this is vivid. This is a bright, colorful. I actually like vivid modes, but a lot of people don't as it is a little bit too oversaturated, but it's just my preference. I do like that. You've got standard mode, eco mode, save power, cinema mode for your films, sport for your sports game optimization for when you're playing your games, filmmaker, expert for a bright room, and then expert for a dull room. So that's all your picture modes. As I said, I'm a fan of the Vivid, but not everyone is. Sound mode, you've got different sound modes. So we've got standard, AI sound, cinema, clear voice, sports, music. So of course, choose your preference on that one. And then if we go through sound out, mine's just going from the speakers because I don't have any surround sound or anything plugged in. Game optimizer, sleep timer, network, and then you've also got a lot more settings in there. But what we're going to do is we're going to go back out and we're going to go to YouTube and we're going to look at some 4K HDR content to show you. So if I just open up the YouTube application here, now we're loaded, we're going to look at some 4K HDR content. So I'm just going to type it in. Actually, if I go back and use the voice just to show you that 4K HDR. So you can see there, the voice works really well, saves you having to type anything. So we'll just choose this Costa Rica in 4K. Let it load, and this is currently, so we've got the ad. This is currently on Wi-Fi, so I'm not using the ethernet. All the internet is running through Wi-Fi and it is working incredibly well. Skip the ad, as usual with YouTube. A bit pixelated until it starts getting the data through. And there we have a wonderful picture there. So again, you can go through the picture modes, get one you want. So it's actually HDR standard there. So if we change that to vivid, again, you can see a lot more bright colors, but the quality is really good here. I'm actually very impressed. So I actually normally use an OLED TV in the front room, and I'm impressed with how well the NanoCell performs. NanoCell is not as good as an OLED, but it is a lot cheaper. And as you can see, even on the black bits here, you've still got very deep blacks with no light bleed. And I've actually tested it with subtitles as well, and we had no problems there. So if we back out, I'll actually just quickly open up something so you can see the subtitles. Because a problem with a lot of TVs is when you get the subtitles on there, you get lots of white bleeding out through those. Right, there we go. So we're opening this up again. This is another 1080p, so I'm just gonna fast forward it through where we've got some speaking. Obviously, I've got the sound off. But you can see, even on the subtitles here, there is no white bleeding out of that. The white is staying even on the black at the bottom here the white is not bleeding through. So that is great news as a lot of TVs do suffer with that. Now we'll quickly take a look at the sound. So here we go, we've got the Costa Rica again, 4K HDR, it looks fantastic. Now I'm gonna turn up the sound. You can hear really crisp sound from this. do 
do is we'll just see the different sound modes, see if we can hear a difference. So if we go into sound modes. So you see it actually changes quite a lot here. This is the AI sound. This is cinema. Clear voice, so if you want to hear the voices a lot more clearly. Sports. Music, this is a lot softer by the sounds of it. And then for your game optimization. So I'm gonna keep it on standard for now, but you can see lots of choices again to suit your preference. So now if we head back, what we're gonna do is take a look at the gaming. Obviously a lot of people are gonna want a big TV for gaming. So I've got the Xbox set up here. I just turn on my Xbox. Do I wanna switch the screen to the connected device? We'll press yes. And it should open my Xbox. So now we have the Xbox open up, we're just gonna load up a game. I'm gonna turn the sound down quite a bit as we don't want that to be distracted. But as you can see here, loads up the game. HDR, we've got 4K HDR here. There we go, and the game's loaded and it looks incredible. So the LG NanoCell 75 inch has game optimizer and it also has low lag and low latency for HDR. So that all comes on and your picture options actually change. So now when I press settings, you can see I've got this here, which is the game optimizer. So it's on standard, you've got different game modes. So FPS, RPG, FPS, standard. So you can see here, it switches between them. You can go up, down, go through them. And you can see the colors are slightly changing. And one thing we can do is actually change these ourselves. So if we go into game optimizer, just turn the volume down a bit there. Load up the game optimizer and you can see you've got the options here. So black stabilizer, you can change this to your preference. So if you want that lowered, you can see the blacks are coming through a lot more and you can do the same with the whites. But personally, I prefer 1010, that seems to work for me. So we also have blue light reduction. For those of you, if you're doing a long gaming session or you're gaming late at night, we can reduce the blue light and there's actually two different levels in here. So level one, you can see the difference there. Level two, a bit more extreme, personally too extreme for me, but then I don't suffer from blue light. So I tend to have that off. And then the game dashboard that we saw down there, you can turn that on and off and also with the game sound. So if I go into settings, settings again, then we'll get the normal settings. So again, you've got your picture, your sound. So we're in Game Optimizer. You don't have to do that. You can go to Vivid. If you like those Vivid colors, you don't have to use the Game Optimizer mode. Go through them. But the Game Optimizer will give you your best performance in terms of low lag and low latency with the HDR. So I would recommend keeping it on that. Now, one thing about this, it's a 60 Hertz panel. It's not a 120 Hertz panel and it only has HDMI 2.0. So that's great. You can play 4K games at 60 Hertz, but obviously with the new Xboxes and Playstations, they do support 4K and 120 Hertz if you have HDMI 2.1 and 120 Hertz TV. So unfortunately, you won't be able to play that on this, but you can play at 60 Hertz in 4K and it looks great. So we'll just play some gaming samples now. So that's it for the gaming. Now back to the dashboard. So this has a quad core processor and using the menus is actually pretty fast and snappy. I'm happy with how well this works. You can see even here, it's giving me a preview of what is running on HDMI 2. And you can go through everything live TV. You've also got airplay and other things in here. So overall, it's a great TV. I was a bit skeptical about how well a 75 inch TV would perform, but actually it performs well, even at 1080p. I was also curious on the difference between a nano cell and an OLED TV. And to be honest, the nano cell is doing an incredible job. The blacks are deep. I mean, they're not as deep as an OLED, but OLEDs are very expensive TVs. But this with local dimming is actually the next best thing. And it's much better than I thought it would be. You get a clear, sharp picture. And thanks to this nano cell filter, you do get great colors in there as well. So as I said, this is sort of the unboxing and first impressions without going into too much detail. I'm now gonna be taking this off the unit. I'll be wall mounting it in the front room, spending a lot more time with it and doing a full in-depth review on how I think it performs. But first impressions are great. I'm happy with how it performs. 
And of course, if you wanna take a look at this TV, the link is down in the description. But as I said, in a couple of weeks, I will be covering it in a lot more detail. But that's it for today's video. So as always, if you've got any questions about this or any comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash a thumbs up. If you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.